Hey guys, my name is Archimus. Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. In this video, I'll go through the process of me building this $250 premium mechanical keyboard. I had fun building it and I really like how the keyboard came out. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, let's start off with the case. This is the KBD Fans Tofu 65. Although it's named Tofu, this case is extremely rigid. It is made of CNC machined aluminium and has a removable brass weight underneath. The case itself comes in at a weight of 1072 grams. But being heavy isn't necessarily a con. It gives the keyboard a more premium feeling which is exactly what I'm going for in this build. Next up is the PCB. Although this won't be visible, it has a gorgeous black and gold color scheme which matches the theme of this keyboard. This isn't hot swap, so we'll have to do some soldering later. Now to the plate. The heavy brass plate has this brush finish and is cold to the touch. Brass plates are the most premium type of plate you can get. They are denser than aluminium, thus it gives a more sturdy typing experience. For the switches, I will be using the 62 gram Duroc L7 mechanical switch, which is a recolor of the famous alpaca switch. I've tested a dozen of linear switches before, and trust me when I say, these are one of the best linear switches I've ever tested. They sound just a bit thockier than the novelty creams and have a premium quality of a Telia switch. The stem wobble on these Duroc L7s are little to none, but if I'm being captious, the stem does have a slight wobbliness on the vertical axis of the switch. Surprisingly, these have less wobble than the Telia switch, which is known for being the best of the best. If you're looking for a smooth factory loop linear switch, I highly recommend these. They're always in stock and comes at the price of 50 cents per switch. Although these Duroc L7 switches came pre-lubed in the factory, it still doesn't beat manual lubing. So I went ahead and looped them myself. In order to do that, we must first dismantle the switches and put them into separate bowls. The switch opener I bought from KBD Fans helped tremendously. However, if you don't have a switch opener, you can still dismantle the switches, but it'll be a hassle and it'll be even more time consuming. The switch opener is quite inexpensive, so I highly recommend them. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get it. Once that is done, I can finally start lubing the switches. I grabbed a paintbrush and dip it in a thick lube called Crytox 205G0, then I applied it evenly to all the contact points within the switch. For lubing the stem of the switch, I got this holder which is more helpful than it seems. It helps hold tiny objects such as the stem of the switch while you lube them. For linear switches, you can lube the legs of the stem, but for tactile and clicky switches, it is recommended that you avoid lubing them because they will lose their tactility. There are nothing wrong with the 62 gram spring inside the Duroc L7 switch, but I do enjoy using a lighter switch, so I'll be replacing all the springs with these 55 gram Duroc gold plated springs. Before I assembled the switches, I added a film between each of the switches. A film is a thin sheet of rubber that sits between the two halves of the switch to reduce any twisting in the joint since the switch is opened. The process of modifying switch is extremely time consuming and tedious. Many people neglect this part but I can assure you that the outcome is definitely worth it. With all of that done, we can now snap the switches into the brass plate. The brass plate will act as a locking mechanism for the switches to prevent them from moving out of place. Along with the switches, I also got these Duroc stabilizers. 
They are allegedly one of the best, so I'm excited to test them out for myself. Moreover, they are also gold and black, which matches the aesthetic of the rest of the keyboard. Lubing stabilizers can sometimes be even more important than lubing switches, but are often neglected. And yes, lubing stabilizers are the same concept as lubing switches. Lubing them helps reduce the harsh sound when typing on bigger keys such as spacebar, shift, delete key, etc. It also helps smoothen the motion of pressing down the key and reduce any unwanted rattle noise. Unlike lubing switches, you really have to use a generous amount of lube to get a smooth typing experience. This part can be quite tricky and requires some practice to master. A well-lubed stabilizer versus an unlubed one is a day and night difference. So I highly recommend you do this part if you plan on building your own keyboard. Now that the stabilizers have been lubed, it's time to screw them onto the PCB. The stabilizers came with gold screws and red o-rings. The red o-ring is meant to be sandwiched between the screws and the PCB to prevent any risk of having a short circuit. They match perfectly with the keycaps I chose, but too bad it won't be visible once the keyboard is completed. After placing the brass plate onto the PCB, we can now solder all 65 switches. I already did this part, but before soldering the switches onto the PCB, I recommend checking the PCB first. If you solder all the switches onto a PCB which turns out to be broken, it will be a nightmare to desolder all the switches and replace it with a viable one. A better option would be a hot swap PCB. It doesn't require any soldering, but like all good things, it comes with a con. Hot swap PCBs are generally more expensive and the clamps can get loose if you replace the switch often thus leading to a poor connection and increased minor wobbliness during typing. The keyboard is close to being completed. Despite the rigidity and heaviness of the case, it is still best to add foam underneath the keyboard to prevent any hollowness or reverb in the keyboard while typing. So I cut out some foam and fit it into the case and punctured a few holes for the screw boards. Then I screwed everything onto the case with the included screws. The keyboard is so close to being completed. I'm a huge fan of Avatar The Last Airbender, so the moment I saw these PBT keycaps, I knew I had to get them. So here we are. This keycap set reminded me of one of my favorite characters, Zuko from the Fire Nation, which is just so sick. I really appreciate the case that the keycaps are placed in. They are aligned, organized, and packaged professionally. Moreover, it came with a plethora of keycaps for me to choose from. They are a double shot PBT and they do not flex at all. A lot of other brands simply throw all the keycaps in a plastic bag and ships it, which can risk warping the keycaps or even snapping them. Alright, after hours upon hours of building this keyboard, it's finally complete. The keyboard now weighs 1525 grams, which is quite heavy. Now to the sound test. The total price of all the components used for building this keyboard is 253 USD. Alright, this is the end of the video. The reason I made this video is because I want to share my fun experience building this custom mechanical keyboard to the world. 
Hopefully I was able to inspire some of you to build your own keyboard. If you are interested in building your own keyboard but you don't know how to, don't worry because I'll be making a step-by-step -step detailed tutorial on how to build your own custom keyboard along with the parts that suit you the most. With that said, see you in the next video.